Okay, today is February 19th, 2017, and um, Jamie, Melanie, and I are here with uh, Grandma Rice. Mm -hmm. So, um, she was born Rosemary Funky. When were you born, and give us the information. Okay, I was, no Catherine? <laughs> Rosemary Catherine Funky. <laughs> Yeah, you you already asked me. Yep, go ahead okay. and start answering. I was born on May twelfth, nineteen twenty six, and my name it was Rosemary Catherine Funky. I lived in the house where I was born until I was four and a half years old. Then my father was able to buy a home, and we moved right near State Fair in in Detroit. But the depression came, and we also lost the home. So we moved on Culver, and we lived on Culver. My mother developed TB, and she was in a sanitarium for three and a half years. How old were you? Maybe five, five and a half. And my grandmother, Funky, my grandfather, and my cousin, Florence, came to live with us at that time. I also had a cousin who lost her mother when my youngest cousin, was a twin and his twin died and his mother died. And so each one of my mothers were, there were five sisters and each one of the remaining four took one of the children and raised them. I didn't know that. And actually my Aunt Frances and my Aunt Marion were single so they eventually took my other grandmother and grandfather to live with them with Frankie and Carl. Then Bernice lived with me, and my cousin Florence lived with my aunt Stella, who was born in England. Did did were you actually born in your house, or were you born? Yes, you yes. were born in the house. We had a doctor though. Oh, a doctor delivered you, not a midwife. No, mm -mm. Okay. Doctor Bowles. I had him until oh maybe I was twelve, and then he retired. And how we had him? My father was a chauffeur for Mr. and Mrs. Pacelius, who owned the good housekeeping shops. And he lived on the boulevard where they lived. And actually, my brother was born in that house. Then we moved to Hancock, and that's where most of the family lived, in the surrounding area near where Grandma Rice lived. So, when my father had enough money to buy a home, we bought a home, and my cousin Donald, actually his father bought one three doors away. But during the Depression, they lost it. Is this the one on Young Street, or we're no, not no, there Culver. yet? Culver. Culver still, okay. So anyhow, from Culver, well, no, actually it was by State Fair, and from there we moved to Culver and we were renting a home, and that's when my mother developed TB. So my grandmother and grandfather and my cousin Florence came to live with us. And we lived there for about two or three years. No, maybe two years. Then we moved on Sheridan, which was close to where my Aunt Aurelia. And it was a two-story home that had a kitchen with a stairway in it and a stairway in coming down the living room. And my brother collected a lot of animals. And at one time we had a hundred Japanese mice with a, a, a Ferris wheel type of thing and everything. Then eventually he traded some of the mice for our dog Bingo. Mm -hmm. And the mother didn't want the mice, but she let us keep the dog. Okay. And Bingo was a German Shepherd. Now, when you had the mice, were they like they in an aquarium like we'd have oh, now? They had, he had many surrounding things. To, okay, so they weren't running around the house. No. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> Good. We actually had, it was almost like two living rooms. So we had that, and then my mother got out of the sanitarium when I was in the third grade, and we moved to Genoa. And then we still had Bernice, but my grandmother and grandfather and my cousin Florence, who had a sister by, they moved with her. So we lived there until I was, uh, I graduated from uh, junior high, and we moved on young. And we lived on Young until we moved where our, our present. We bought the home for my mother. Okay, when you when you moved to Young, was your dad still there? Yes. Okay. Yes. 
So uh, we lived there, and I went to Denby High School. And I met my future husband at the Vanity Ballroom, but I had other boyfriends before him. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a wonderful dancer, a wonderful person, and he made me happy. And when he proposed to me, he said, okay, he said, you have nice teeth, you have a fur, fur coat, and your mother is slim. <laughs> Prerequisites to marry into Ralph's family. <laughs> so then, he, my husband, Ralph, was in college before he was drafted, and then after he was drafted, he came home from the war, and he finished college, and we were expecting our third child then. And uh, he finally made it. Many times he wanted to throw in the towel because we didn't have money. He was, he got, he was on the co-op, and it was three, three months you worked, three months you went to school. We would borrow the money when he was in school and pay back the people when he worked the three months. And eventually, my mother and father got divorced before I was married. And eventually, we bought the home for my mother when we could afford it. And we lived there until 1963, and we moved to our present home here. Did Grandma live with you in, in, in the house on Young, or did she move Sometimes. out there? Sometimes. She actually moved to uh, New Mexico and stayed there. And actually, when she came home, Debbie was making her communion, and that's why she came home, and she never went back. So anyhow, we came here. Uh, Dawn was born just before we moved here, so she was the ninth child. Then Roger was actually born here. Were all of us born from Dr. Bremer? Yes, we had Dr. Bremer. And the reason I had him is because my sister-in-law, Virginia, her sister worked for him, and that's how we got him. So we had him for all the births. So what were you like um, when you were 24? What, was what were you up to? What would you like to do? I don't know. We were quite busy uh, with Dad finishing college and doing different things. Did you have two or three and kids? And we always took vacations. Your father liked to take vacations. When he had his vacation, he said he wasn't going to come home and paint a house. <laughs> he was going to go someplace. So, And we always managed to do that. And then when we came here, uh, many of them graduated from Cousin High School. It was Rick, Diane, actually. We waited till we moved here when Diane finished Dominican High. And then we moved here. And both Diane and Rick were a little unhappy because we took them away from all their friends. <laughs> but eventually they liked it. But they, they still considered the other house their home because they were young. Because they grew up there. Yes. So anyhow, we've been here, had a wonderful life, and went many places. My two boys that are deaf accomplished more than a lot of hearing people do. And. They've been wonderful children, and I have the greatest grandchildren <laughs> that I absolutely adore. And now I got all these great grandbabies <laughs> that keep me active, even though I'm 90 years old. I miss most our talking together. Yeah, because we did do that all the time, and he helped raise the children. And he he was fortunate to make enough money that we were very comfortable without being over elaborate, but we still were comfortable. And we took many trips. I didn't like jewelry. I didn't care for uh, different things. And that was our present to each other when we took our trips. That go do things instead of stuff. Pardon? Instead of having um, material. material things, you'd like to do yes. things together, adventures. And I was lucky that he loved to travel and do the things that I did, because a lot of men and women don't like the same things. You were 17 when you were married. I'm minus one month. So okay. almost 18, and how old was Dad? Uh, he turned 21 in uh, uh, September that year, so he, he was 20. Okay. And yep. he came home on furlough and he said, you know, he said, why don't we get married? And that's why 
So how long from the time he said, why don't we get married to when you got married? Was it that furlough he came home and you got married that weekend? Uh, the, yes. And then he had, So it was a really quick turnaround wedding. And But he was able to stay home for that week. We got married that weekend and he was home for that week. Oh, well, I didn't know that. I thought you had, I thought he asked you and then on the next furlough you got married. Oh, no, I'm not talking about when he asked me. Uh, okay, so how long between when he asked you? About six months. Okay, so that's what I had originally thought. Okay. <laughs> um, next, what we'd like you to do, and I'll shut it off right now because it just went to mm -hmm. Actually, our wedding was very small. I had my Aunt Aurelia, my Uncle Oscar, my Aunt Dad's Aunt Flora, Aunt Seal, and... Uh, my brother was in the service, so he wasn't there. Ralph's brothers were in the service, they weren't there. And we actually had ration step stamps that we had the, and I got married at Garden Angel. And we actually had to use the ration stamps for the food, which you could hardly get anything at that time. And uh, it was small, but very nice. And Aunt Chris was my maid of honor. And, grand, uh, and my father, uh, Ralph's cousin, was home. He was essential to, for working at GM, and so he wasn't in the service, so he was the best man. And tell us about your wedding dress. I had a blue suit with a beautiful pink blouse, and I actually had a blue hat, but I never had a, a picture taken with the mm -hmm. blue hat. <laughs> but it was very nice. And Father Thomas Edison married us. Mm -hmm. And I never realized that thinking at that time till we went and planned our funeral. And Mr. Hunt said, Oh, Thomas Edison married you. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty so, good. <laughs> yeah, and I, it, it never connected before. So then fa your father, your grandfather, finished college in. It was pretty good smooth sailing. We had a few ups and downs, but more happiness. Oh, why so many? Because when I was growing up, all my friends had either seven or eight in the family, and they had so much fun. I would come home, my brother was four years older. It was lonesome. So you liked the chaos. And I thought Grandpa's family was big to start with, but, and then we kept trying and trying because we wanted another girl, which was Dawn. <laughs> she had it. But after uh, Ron was born, I saw Dawn. Then I had Rob. And then I had Ryan. And finally Dawn. <laughs> then so wasn't that. <laughs> so it's, it's been a wonderful family. To start with Diane. Do you well, wanna try she will say now? this, and, and the boys would say that she was Miss Goody Two Shoes. She did every, she really was almost perfect. <laughs> she really was. I mean, I never uh, had a fight with her or anything. I never did with you. In fact, most of the kids I did. And I okay, we're that. still on Diane. Okay, what I have to say about Diane is when your father was working at one company, he was working out of town, and in the summertime, they let him use the cottage instead of just giving him and so we went to the cottage and Diane used to go down I'd be down by the water with the kids and she would go and make me a lettuce and tomato toasted sandwich and she just thought she was it was wonderful and it was yeah. uh, Rick now Rick was deaf but one of the things I remember most about him when he finally said something at school that he learned, and it was on Valentine's Day, he said, I love you. And it was the first time he ever said that. Do you know how old he was? <sighs> Probably five. Oh. But did he learned to say that the teacher had him practice. All, the whole class had that. So that was one. Of, and he always was very helpful. He, to this day, he's very helpful. And he married a wonderful woman. And he said he would never marry somebody from Detroit because they were almost like cousins because he grew up with them. <laughs> and he was in the same class with the small class all those years until he went to Cousno. <laughs> okay, now on to Randy. 
Well, Randy was a little pistol for a oh. while. <laughs> But when he went in the service and he came out, he was a man. And he always was nice, but he was a little different. And my Debbie was, she kind of reminds me of Courtney. Uh, in fact, when she started school, they went to kindergarten, one direction, but they went to a Catholic school. I had to hire somebody, one of the kids, to walk her because she would talk to everybody. And, it, and they were having some kind of play or something doing at the school with the nuns. And they were asking what somebody would like to do. And she said, I can sing and I can dance. And she did. <laughs> she was always that way. And she sang in the, in the choir and had solos when she was in junior mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. So it's just very, very fond memories of her also. Okay, now on to Ron. Ron. <laughs> Ron was always, right from the start, even though he was deaf, very independent. And he frightened me a couple times. We had the swimming pool in the backyard, and he jumped off the roof into the swimming pool. Oh, and I forgot to tell you about Randy. He did to jump off the dust porch because he had a little girlfriend by the name of Rita Kramer that lived around the corner right behind where John lived. And he jumped off because? And, and my, I was at the hospital with my visiting my mother, and a babysitter was sitting oh, the with poor babies. And she was horrified. We took him to Dr. Bremer, and he was fine. And he did it because he wanted to be? Impress this little girl. <laughs> and he and Mike Tyson, in the house where John eventually moved in, she was, he was right behind him, and they were always trying to... <laughs> All my boys had girlfriends, practically, from the time they were small. Those nice lovers. Yeah, <laughs> really. They did. Really bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did she say? The I just said, one. I said, except for your dad. <laughs> oh, no. Your dad, no. dad. <laughs> Actually, we're not to him yet. No, we'll no. talk about Rob now. Or do we talk about Ron? No. You said Ron. It was it was Ron. Okay. Yeah. Jumping in the pool. And he did quite well in school. And in fact, both boys, Rick and Ron, got degrees, which, as I said, and they also were in the Deaf Olympics, and they both received medals, gold medals. And they did many, many things that a lot of hearing people never did. And they were both were quite popular. And then, uh, then Rob. Uh, Rob was a little different. He got into sports. He was in cross country and he swam where his one brother excelled. Sometimes he would come in last, but he always tried. And the one thing about Rob now. And Rob helps me immensely around here now. And helped dad. And he helped dad. And he, dad needed all the help. Took him walking, took him to the store. He's a very, very sweet young man till this day. Sweet, and he's 60 for a young man. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay, then there's Russ. Oh, and then there's Russ, who I think of all my children, maybe Rick also, is the most religious, and Diane. And my mother always said he was going to be a priest, but she wasn't satisfied with that. She wanted him to be a bishop, so I think that kind of scared him a little. <laughs> But he had that quality. He really, really did. And to this day, he's a wonder. All of them are wonderful fathers and mothers, and uh, I think I've raised wonderful children. Mm -hmm. I really, really do. He Ra won. And Ralph, we did it together. Okay, now we're on to Ryan. And who? Ryan. Ryan. Ryan was I'm my first it. one that ever wanted designer clothes or shoes. <laughs> And he came up to me and he said, I, I can't, uh, what, do you remember the uh, tennis shoe that he wanted? Adidas. Adidas. I had never heard of it. And he was the first one that got a, a down jacket. And he's the one, and, you're, and Russ never cared for designer things. He just, he does now. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't then. But Brian was my clothes horse. 
He really, really <laughs> was. And he also had girlfriends right from the beginning. I mean, they would call him up. <laughs> and the same thing with Roger. Oh. It, <laughs> He's not yet. <laughs> so, but, uh, and Ryan, as I said, all the children, I love the ones they married, their, the, their families, they were raised the same way I raised my children, so it's been wonderful families. And they're all friends. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Even though there was divorce, they still stayed friends. Yep. Okay, me. Oh, her turn. Oh, this one here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Don was always ambitious and, and very nice and sweet. Had a lot of friends, and she was. She just with everything you tackled, you were good at. So it just, and she married a wonderful man. She's got wonderful children. Russ has wonderful children. I just adore them. I really do. Okay, now Roger. Well, Roger is my free soul. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. I drew Roger would have another, well, he just got by in school because he had to do it. But he never... But he also ran for officer. He was the vice president of his... Uh, Popularity was not a problem for no. Roger. And he could talk to any age. So could Randy <laughs> out, of the, out of the two when they were young. They could talk to anybody any age. Yeah, from little kids to yes. uh, elderly. They yes. could both talk yes. to anybody. Always. But, uh, but Roger had uh, so many girlfriends that... <laughs> and he... Even to this day, he said, do you remember and that they were almost all of them bleached blondes and short <laughs> and <enough>. makeup. <laughs> Why did you always want, or did you always want 10 children? You loved to do with them. Or... When they were young. And then the other thing was, what did you and Ralph love most about having grandchildren and then great-grandchildren? <laughs> what is the one about? Okay, what is, what's a favorite memory with... All of us, my generation. I think because you all got along so well. I really do. It just, I, I just, I think we were a very happy family. And as I said, the, all the spouses that everyone picked out, we liked them, we liked their families. It just, it was, even though we had sad times, we had happy times, far more. And what about the grandchildren? Oh. Mm -hmm. I remember when Rodney was born, and we went on a vacation to Yellowstone, and we looked all over Yellowstone to get the perfect souvenir to take home for him. <laughs> we did. It was yep, just, every single and, gift shop. And then I, my neighbor had company, and I took him over to show the baby. <laughs> <laughs> but the grandchildren, I... We nearly moved to Florida when Dad was going to retire, and I couldn't mm -hmm. the grandchildren. I absolutely couldn't. It just, it's too precious time to give up. And now you have great-grandchildren. Oh, they're even cuter. <laughs> <laughs> it's because so, so many are so little now. And it's, I really, I love babies. I love the... <laughs> I love them to play in a sandbox. I love them to come over and swim in the pool. I love them to stay overnight. And so did Dad. Yeah. And we they were wonderful yeah. guests. They wrote a lot of thank you notes. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one that's sitting here that, are you my daddy? Mm -hmm. Are you my mommy? And I still have those every books. Time. <laughs> every time. That's the only way I could get her to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. But, I do remember those books. And I love the dance recitals. I love the plays. I love the sports the kids were in. And Ralph's brother would go to many things with us. That's awesome. I want to say with you children, but I really like the fjords about the best of it. But I think taking you out west when we went to Disney, uh, Disneyland and that, it was for, I had been to Texas, so... Uh, in San Antonio and Grandpa was in uh, service but uh, that was a wonderful trip going out there. Yeah that was in 1968 because mm -hmm. I was five 
and there were eight kids in the station wagon and you and, and, a, and a son that didn't want to go but thanked me when we got home and that was Randy. <laughs> he said, I am not going. You think I'm going on a vacation with all of these children? He was wonderful. <laughs> he took care of the kids. So when, we weren't going to go to Vegas on that trip because it was a family trip. And as you left the Grand Canyon, you kept seeing signs, Las Vegas, Las Vegas, Las Vegas. So. Ralph said, you want to go there? I said, oh, we can go for a couple days. <laughs> so when we get into the city, not realizing what day it is, it was a Saturday. And we, he said, well, where do you want to stay? In the Riviera at Jack Benny. I said, let's go there and we'll stay there. We got in there and we had been getting a double, two bedrooms, with two double beds and a cot in each one. And he said, I don't think we can really accommodate you. He said, I suggest, and downtown Vegas was safe then. He said, there's a wonderful place that you can stay at. So he said, be our guest for a, a brunch the next day. So we left all the children with Debbie and got food for you. And we went into the, the main strip and took Randy with us because he was so good on the trip. <laughs> so anyhow, I think we were playing with nickels or pennies back then. And when we got hungry, we sat down to eat. And the waitress said, what would you like to drink? And Dad said, I'll have a Paps or a Blatz. I can't remember. And Randy said, I'll have the same thing. And I said to him, you're not old enough, you're only 17. He said, I'm not old enough to be in the casino. You have been giving me nickels and pennies. <laughs> <laughs> so that really, but we went to uh, wonderful places. We were in New Mexico, across the country. We were gone for three weeks then also. Your father was able to finagle three weeks all the time. I don't know if anybody at GM that ever got that, those privileges. Only Ralph. So I think that has to be a favorite trip, but by ourselves, I think going to the fjords, it was absolutely beautiful because we'd be on top of a mountain and you'd go down and you'd be on the bus. It was a Mercedes bus that only held 14 people and that would go on the ship and then you'd, and to eat there, it was the first time I ever had a smorgasbord, which is a buffet in Norway that was out standing and, and never had one since mm -hmm. but in the and when you went on the boat and then you stayed at the hotel they went right out you ordered salmon they went right out and got the salmon and caught it right there mm -hmm. wow and they served it with drawn butter which i had <laughs> never had before which is your favorite yeah so <laughs> i think those are the two best vacations okay well the good old days as i said i Dancing was really very important to everybody at, at that time. And we actually had nightclubs, which were restaurants, and they'd have entertainment. And it was very good entertainment. It wasn't smutty like it is now. And you could go out for a dinner and you spend your evening there. It was wonderful. It just, uh, and as I said, I emphasize on dancing because if you talk to anyone that's older, dancing was very important. I wish it was a world, even though we had a World War II, it was a much more settled place and we had, I think you were freer, you were frightened, your children would play out late at night. We used to walk to Eastwood Park, which was three miles away from us, never think about anything thing to happen. And you really didn't have the murders and the, the bickering and the fighting that we have in politics now. It, it just, we did live even in a wonderful world and I don't know if it'll ever come back. I hope so, I hope so. My children, hmm. my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren as they grow up which they are growing much too fast. <laughs> Family life is the most important thing. Definitely. Yeah, and we all learn that yeah. at a very young age, that family is uh, 
You always have family. And friends. Good friends. Okay. Uh, what is something you want to tell your family, whether it's advice or something you'd like to say to always have? Well, my advice is I never want to interfere with anyone. They lived, we lived our life and they should live theirs. And they're all doing a very good job. Absolutely. And what else would you want to say to, to everyone? A lot. <laughs> no, I just, that you love them, that you, you know, wish the best for them. I don't know. Of course I miss them. It wasn't the best for them. And to have the happy life that I did with Grandpa. Yeah, exactly. And I had the most wonderful uh, mother-in-law. And I wanted to be like she is with my in-laws. Because she was just absolutely marvelous.